This morning we're in Romans chapter 10, Romans chapter 10, verses 1 through 3. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. For they, being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted themselves under the righteousness of God. Amen. Thank you, brother. I appreciate that. Popular passages of Scripture there for sure. Every week when I preach, I realize I'm preaching to three crowds of people. Whether it's here in, here in, the, in the congregation, whether it's over the internet, or whether it's in the nursing homes, wherever it might be. I realize that one crowd of people I'm preaching to is those that are lost. Those that are headed for hell, though they don't have to be. But they are. The second crowd of people that, use, that we're preaching to is Christian people that are happy. You, uh, you see them. They're, they're, you, you can probably think of someone that, that's sort of bubbly all the time, just excited all the time. I can, name, I can name names of people that some of you would know, and you'd agree. Then the third crowd of people is Christian people that seem to be miserable all the time. It's got always something to complain about, always something to gripe about, always something on the go. I recently went to Brother Keith's and Sister Becky's for lunch a couple Sundays after church a couple weeks ago. And uh, this, this is the way I remember it. Uh, we, had, we had ham, green beans, and potatoes. Well, I, w- I, actually went, I think I actually went two weeks in a row or two, two weeks close to, to, to the, together. He made spaghetti one week, and it, it, was, it was terrific. Of course, spaghetti doesn't have to be terrific before I like it, but it's been a long time since I had ham, green beans, and potatoes, and that's what they had. And I was so hungry for them. Took a big old plate of them. I took two bites, and Becky said, that's enough. The rest of them for us for the rest of the week. But I'm still hungry. She said, well, that's too bad. I made them just enough for us the rest of the week, and if you eat more, we don't have them the rest of the week. Becky was grinning like a pig in an ore patch. I was about half ticked because I was hungry. I wanted, I wanted seconds. It was her attitude, and she had one. She gets. <laughs> It was, it, was, it was her attitude that caused me to think about the, the message today. I've entitled the message, Come Back for Seconds. God gives out seconds. Becky doesn't give out firsts. It's like um, I, was watching, um, I was watching Andy Griffith this week. I don't know if, you, if you've seen the Andy Griffith. Bro, Brother Jeff probably has. The one where the, he's, he's um, no, it was Lucy, it was Lucy and, and uh, Ethel that's who it was. They were, um, they were trying to impress a boss, and they brought these, this meal out, and they placed it in front of them. Before they could get a taste of this, they took it away, and it, something about a schedule. They were trying to stay on schedule. And they placed it in front of Ricky, and before he got to the food, it was off schedule, and he took the food away, and, and this and that. That's sort of the way it was that day over there. Um, but the truth of the matter is, I, I, don't, I don't, I'm getting a little bit of a pudge on me here, but I don't eat near as much as I used to. I used to could sit down and really eat. I mean, really lay into it. But I'm not doing that as much as I used to anymore. And the, the application that I want to bring to, from Sister Becky and her attitude to why Christians aren't so happy today is because sometimes we come to the, we come to the spiritual table, if you will, and get just enough to get us to heaven. That's all we want. We're not interested in serving God here. We're not interested in being to God what we're supposed to be or what he wants us to be. Just as long as, just as long as we get enough spiritual food to get inside the gate of heaven, even if we're just sitting on a chair inside the gate of heaven, no further. Once we get inside the gates, we're going to heaven. Can't go to hell then. Whew. 
that satisfies me with God. Preacher friend preached the message one time, and I've never forgotten it. Salvation is more than being saved. Amen. And it truly is. It truly is. Um, in John chapter 10, verse 10, the Bible says, Jesus said, said, I am come that you might have life. That life that he mentions there is the life that we live. The life that he gives us, eternal life, getting ready to go to heaven. Every one of us, I don't care how good you are, I don't care how much education we might have, I don't care how much money we might have or where we live, every one of us deserve to die and go straight to hell. Every one of us. Not one of us in here are good enough on our own. Not one of us in here are near good enough on our own to get into heaven. That's the life that he's talking about. He gives us that life that we have in Christ. Praise God, there's not a whole lot of things. Name, name some things. No, don't do it. We're going to run out of time. But think of some things that are, are, are absolute. They cannot change. God's word. God's word is one. You're not going to come up with a handful. I guarantee you're not going to come up with a handful because there are very few of them around. God and the word of God are one and two for sure. Um, heaven doesn't change. Look at the second, but there's a second part of the verse. So the first part of that verse gives us, gives us life. It gives us the promise of heaven. The second part then uh, comes to mind. He says, I have, that you might have life and have it what? More, More abundantly. There's two, there's two different lives there. One life gives us the ticket to heaven the other life says, well, while you're here, you may as well work for me here. While you're here, you may as well be happy here. I don't think there's anything wrong with a Christian being happy. I don't think, I don't think there's anything wrong with a, with a Christian lifting her hands to God and, and praising the Lord. Amen. I don't think there's anything wrong with, with, with uh, uh, talking about Jesus to somebody, our, our neighbors and our, our, uh, our co-workers. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Um, so the, the one life gets us into heaven. The one life gives us a quality of life here. And who, who doesn't, who doesn't want, would rather, who would rather be sick than healthy? Raise your hand. I didn't think I'd get anybody. The sort of thing, who'd, who'd rather, I asked the, <laughs> I started a conflict almost one night at the rescue mission. I said, who'd rather be in the hospital than here? And half of them raised their hand, they'd rather be in the hospital. But I don't know about you, I'd just as soon be in the church house than in the hospital house any time. Any time. To prove the two parts of the verse, can we improve on heaven at all? Is there anything that you can think of that would make heaven better than what it's going to be when we get there? I couldn't think of anything. So it has to be two different lives he's talking about. It has to be a life while we're here, right, waiting for heaven, and a life while we're in heaven with a ticket in hand. That's the, the more abundantly. When I, when I came to Christ, he gave me eternal life, everlasting life. I, because of that, am never going to st step foot inside hell. I don't even want to know what it looks like. I don't even want to know what it feels like. I uh, talked to a gentleman a while back, but I've talked to many gentlemen, and you probably have too in the past. Well, I know, I know I'm not going to heaven. That means I'm going to hell, right, preacher? Yeah, yeah that, that's right. Um, but um, I'm just telling you right now, all my friends are going to be there too. And I said, well, you, you're not going to know it. You're not going to know it. You're going to be, you're going to be as if you're the only one there. You're not going to ever see anybody else in hell. I preached a message one time, who in hell knows you? The answer is nobody. Nobody in hell knows you because nobody's, nobody knows they're there but themselves. There are um, Christians around that are just bubbly. They're just excited. They're the ones that, that realize that gone, 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 gone. Yes, my sins are gone. Praise God, they're gone. 
They're never to be reminded, remembered by Christ. Then there are those that, that um, are always miserable. They're always down in the dumps. And by the way, my Bible says to mark them that cause division among you and stay away from them. It doesn't necessarily mean unsaved world. There, there, are, there are a lot, we talked about this in Sunday school just a little bit. There are a lot of Christians, well, maybe I shouldn't say a lot. Yeah, there's, there's probably a lot. There are a lot of Christians that you ought not hang around, that you ought not be around. Because you're going to be like them, and being like them is, if being like them is being not what Christ wants you to be, then you don't want to be around them. They're as unhappy as, as people in the world. Matter of fact, Matter of fact, I believe that people in the world are, are, are happier than, than a Christian is that backslidden. I believe the person, that, that, that stay, the person that's home right now, that's headed for hell, don't, don't take me wrong, I'm not saying that, that, that he feels good because he's headed for hell, but I believe the person that, that's home right now, headed for hell, has, has less to worry about, he thinks, than the Christian that sits there and thinks, man, I ought to be in church. Why am I sitting here? Why am I making an excuse? Why am I not in church today? Why am I not praising the Lord today? There may be, there may be some in this very room, I don't know, that are, um, that are, that are not happy. Thousands, I'm, I'm, I'm talking to thousands of people over the, over the Internet that I guarantee you, Hundreds of thousands of people are not happy. And they're Christians. They're saved. They're born again. Man, we all be, we all be, we all be jumping a pew excited about the things of Christ. You're miserable though, because if you see what I see sometimes, when you hit a sin that someone's guilty about. The mean lip comes out, meaner than yours. That eyeball comes out. Um, when the preacher preaches on praying and you don't do much of it, that, that lip comes out. When the preacher preaches on reading your Bible and you don't read yours much, that eyeball comes out. When a preacher preaches on not forsaking the assembling of yourselves together and you're barely in church, just happened to be here this Sunday. You're preaching to me, aren't you, preacher? I thought that, I thought that recently. Um, well, I ain't going to expound on it. You're, you're, I, I come one Sunday and you tell me that I ought to be in church every Sunday. I know I ought to be in church every Sunday. Don't get on me, preacher. I'm, yeah, that's, that's, that's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. Praise God for the first part of the verse gets me to heaven. The second part of the verse gives me a, the first part of the verse gets me to heaven with, a, uh, with a, uh, a, a life insurance policy. It never goes up. Once it's, once it's, once it's purchased, it's there. It never runs out. Sound like, sound like Tom Selleck, don't I? Um, it never, you never have to worry about it. It's purchased, it's done. So I'm saying, number one, the happiest person alive is a Christian with the abundance of life tag on him, ready to go to heaven. The, I believe the, the next happiest person is the unsaved person because he don't know any better. He's heard it before, but he's only 20 and 20-year-old people don't die. I'm only 14 years old, a teenager told me this week. I got a long way to go yet. Maybe. Maybe. I, I, I get pretty cruel sometimes in counseling. I, I, have, a, I have a newspaper that I keep, I keep it up to date as much as I can. And when someone says, well, I have plenty of time, I pull out that newspaper to the obituary page and show them. 
read that third one down where that 10-year-old boy just died. Young people die too. Young people die too. So I'm saying this morning, just jump on in. The water's fine. Praise God. Salvation's free to everyone. Just, just, just jump on in and soak in it. Revel in it. I can, I can guarantee you, I can guarantee you that, that if you get in and get, get excited for God, He'll take care of you. He'll, he'll, uh, do, he'll do what the song says. It might, he might calm the storm sometime in you. Sometimes He might allow, allow the storm to rage around you. But I guarantee you, whatever you need, whatever you need, He'll come to your rescue just in time. There's a lot more to the Christian life than just dodging the bullets of Satan. I can think of some major things right off the top of my head that, that, um, that have to be done around this place. Well, preacher, I, I, I'm saved. I'm ready to go. This is, the guy, this is the guy sitting inside the gates of heaven, just sitting there, not doing anything, not serving God. I don't know what to do. Well, I can give you some ideas. I can give you some ideas. Jess needs help. Boy, does she ever need help. She needs help more than she realizes she needs help. Matter of fact, her whole family, well, never, never mind. Evan needs help with the teenagers. You say, well, kids just aren't my thing, okay? The, there's, a, there's, a, there's a vacuum over in the closet that, that doesn't run itself. That, that, that'll work. Um, I don't know about how, about, how about Tina? Tina needs help. She needs someone to sit back here and mess the sound up like she messes it up every week. Now, Tina does a great job. She does need some help. She needs some help. You say, preacher, that, that, that sounds okay, but none of it, none of it fits me. What, 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 what else do you have? Well, my biggest statement then is you're just a lazy person. You're just a lazy person. If you can't, if you can't help clean the church, if you can't help sing in the church, if you can't help with the kids, if you can't help with, with the things that anybody can do, you, don't, you, I, you, you can sit back there with Tina. She don't bite. You're just a lazy person. There are multitudes of people that are going, that are going to go to heaven that are just inside the door, sort of like, sort of like Becky was with the, with the ham and green beans and potatoes. You can't have any more. God's not that strict, though. God says you can come back for seconds anytime you want. Just come on back. Just come on back. Now, I probably ate my last meal at the Clever's house. But <laughs> Keith takes care of me. He brings his spaghetti in. He, uh, he, on purpose, we're in cahoots. He, on purpose, puts too much spice in it. Becky don't like spice, so he puts it, puts it in so Becky don't like it. Get that old, anyhow. There are multitudes of people just sitting around doing nothing except growling, except griping, except complaining. It's, and by the way, it's, it's, the, it's the backfield of the Christian life where we need to help as much as anything. It's what happens between the time quarter after 12 comes on Sunday morning and 10 o'clock comes the next Sunday morning is when the battleground needs to have the workers on. All week long, there's things going on to make, to, make, uh, to make the Sunday morning service what it needs to be, and you can help. You can help. Jesus said, give me your life, and I'll make you a new home. Give me your life, and I'll give you a joy, that, a peace that passes understanding. Why, why, do we, why do we then nibble? I don't know about you, but whenever, whenever I eat spaghetti, I don't care what anybody thinks how I eat it. I still think the best way to do it is to, is to, give, it a, give, it a, give it one good old suck and once your sucker is sucked up and you can't suck anymore, take a pair of scissors and cut it off right there and let it go down on the plate. 
I've never done that, but I'm going to do it one time. But I don't care, I don't care how anybody, what anybody thinks whenever I eat spaghetti. But I'm not going to nibble at it. Where was I at with somebody? I hope it, was, I hope it wasn't anybody in here because uh, I'm going to talk about them. They re, we were eating spaghetti, and they were taking one, no lie, one noodle at a time and go. I'm not a fast eater, but I was halfway done for they, they only had two or three noodles down. And because they were sucking it up, they had the spaghetti juice running down their chin. That wasn't anybody in here, was it? Good. God's saying, don't, don't nibble around, don't nibble around the, the, the things of God. Jump right in and get, in, get, get, a good, get a good taste of it. There's plenty here. That's not all. When I came to Christ, I got rest. I got a life, and I got a life. I got a life in heaven, and he gave me a life here. I don't know about you, but I'm excited about getting up in the morning and, and doing what God wants me to do all day long, whether it's going to work or not going to work. But I also got rest. In Hebrews chapter, chapter 10, you need not turn there. He deals with the word rest. It's the rest that you get when you lay your head on your pillow at night and you realize that you don't have to go to hell. It's the rest that... That you, that you can lay down at night and realize I'm not going to say something tomorrow that's going to cause me to lose my salvation. Nobody's going to take it away from me. I have it for sure. It's the rest. But then there's a, there's a, there's a second part of the rest where he talks about the, the take, taking his yoke upon you. He says the busier, and, and you, you'll, you'll find this out if you get there, and some of you are there, the busier you get with Christ, the more you get from God. The more you enjoy doing for God what, what he has for you to do. There's a rest that gives you a peace of mind. Not only rest that gives you salvation in, in heaven, but it gives you a peace of mind. Peace of mind is God's got this. God's got me as I walk down the street. Um, there's, there's, if, if, um, if an earthquake Opens up the, I heard, I heard on the news the other day, Howard County had a two-point-something earthquake. I didn't feel it, but I guess it's because we're not in Howard County. But uh, an earthquake can happen anywhere. A tornado can happen anywhere. But I have that sweet promise of God that if I get, if I get, uh, if I get sucked up in a tornado and end up in heaven, what else good can happen? Dr. John R. Rice used to always say, um, Devil, you're not going to um, entice me with hell because I have the Word of God right here in my hand. And you're not going to fool me. I, I, have, I have God in my heart right here. Right here. The rest that gives you the peace of mind if an accident takes place. I know, I know a Christian fellow right now. I can't tell you his name, but pray, pray for him. He is obsessed with being in a car wreck. He is to the point where he will not leave his house and get in an automobile because he's afraid he's going to get in. in there, there's, a, there's a name for that probably. But he's, he's obsessed with it. And I keep telling him, uh, just, are, are you saved? Yeah, I'm saved. I'm saved. Are you saved to the uttermost? Are you saved beyond being saved? There's more to it than being saved. Are you serving God? Are you, are, are you reading your Bible? Are you in your Bible? Yeah, some. We mean some. Get in it all the time. Praise God that we don't have to worry about our salvation. Praise God that we don't have to worry about going across the street and getting hit by a car as long as we're, as long as we're uh, uh, watching one way or the other. I, don't, I, haven't, I haven't thought for the longest time until... Memorial Day or Veterans Day or one of them days come up, comes up. I, I, didn't, I didn't go to bed and think one time last night that an airplane was going to fall in the house. There's people obsessed with that kind of stuff. The second rest is, is when I'm saved to the other most. It's, it's praising God that I, that I can't lose my salvation, but praising God that he, he says, Jesus said, Call to me all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. I feel, I feel sorry 
for Christians across the country this morning who are, um, who are not serving God and, and worried all the time about what God's going to do. It's sort of like I, I told you before, if I, were a, if I were a criminal, and I've been called worse than that, if I were a criminal, you could, you could do like Barney Fife. You could hang the keys right there in front of the thing, and, and I, wouldn't, I wouldn't get them. I wouldn't want to escape. Because if I were a criminal, think about, think about the, the manhunts that, that, that's been involved in this area at different times. People escape. I was, uh, who was that? I was talking to Tina back in the day. We had our bus ran through Mercersburg, and you young, you young punks, I don't, I don't even know if Becky and Keith will remember it. Bev might remember it. You remember the name Merle Unger? You remember the name Merle Unger? Well, Merle, Merle Unger was a guy, he, he, he killed a city policeman at Five Corners out there in Hagerstown, an off-duty city policeman, and he escaped from prison three or four times. Well, his sister rode our bus out of Mercersburg. And every week while he was on, while he was on the run, the state trooper would pull our bus over and search the bus make, to make sure we weren't transporting him from Mercersburg to Hagerstown back and forth. I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to be him. If, if you lock me up in jail, you, you can let the door, Andy, if Andy was here, he could let, just let the door hang open. He wouldn't have to worry about it. I wouldn't escape. because I, I, You hear an ambulance, you think it's a police car. Dog catcher dog catcher's blows his whistle, you think it's a policeman behind you. But still we, we, we straddle the fence. We play with God. Instead of getting on fire and getting in for God, no, no, wonder, we're not, no wonder we're not happy. Those people that are out of church this morning that are, that are saved, ready to go to heaven, they have to think at one time or another, um, uh, see, God's going to get me in church somehow. God's going to make me think somehow. Those folks that take the summer off and go to the ball games. Those folks that take the summer off and go to the river. I wonder um, what they think whenever they think about the, the Lord Jesus Christ. Remembering back to life's abundance. Rest means salvation, but rest also means that he'll help us with our busyness here. I found out the more I get involved in the things of Christ, the busier that I get for Christ, the better the day goes, the quicker the day goes. It's sort of, it's sort of like at your job. The busier, I, I couldn't, I couldn't be, I couldn't, I couldn't be a, 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 a watchman. I don't think I could be a watchman, just sit and watch. I, I don't think I could do, well, and, and he does he does a lot of walking now. I couldn't be someone that sits in one of those towers at the prison and just looks around all the time. I'd be like Gomer. I'd drop the gun out of the thing and wonder what happened to it. The busier you are, the faster the day goes, the more you get accomplished. And that's the way it is with God. God says, I'll, um, I'll, uh, I'll keep you busy. Just surrender to me. And when you're, when you're, when you're hungry, come back. I'll give you seconds. God is the God of seconds. I was talking to a young man just the other day. He, um, well, he's not young anymore. He's my age. Well, he's, he's a young person. He was reminiscing back. We were reminiscing back to whenever we were younger. And he grew up on a farm. And his, grandpa, his grandpa had a, had a plow that he pulled behind a, a mule but he had to walk behind the plow. So the mule was here, the plow was here, and he was here. <laughs> and any old thing can happen when you walk behind a mule. Whether it's a human mule or anyhow. Finally, he got a, one day he went home from school, and there was a mule and a plow, and the plow had a seat on it. And you could sit on the seat 
and plow the field with a mule. And he said, many a time, I'd sit on that seat with my grandpa, and we'd be about 20 feet up the road, and I'd hear, he done fell asleep. But he said, don't you know that mule knew exactly what he's supposed to do? He'd go to the end of the row, he'd stop, he'd turn around, he'd come back and plow the field just that way. He was so accustomed to what the, the grandpa wanted him, the, the owner wanted him to do that he just did it. Wouldn't it be good to, to know God that way? Wouldn't it be good to know what God's next step is? I think we can, I think we can be there. I think we can get there. The closer, the closer you get to the Lord, I'm not talking about, I'm not talking about, um, well, I'm, I'm close to the Lord, I'm, I'm out watching nature in the, in the field. No, that, that's not what I'm talking about. I, um, I, I enjoy this and I enjoy that. Now, I'm talking about getting close to God and working for Christ day in and day out, month in and month out, year in and year out. I, I, um, it's like, it's like um, uh, May, the, May the 8th, 19... Don't hold me to it. May the 8th, I think it's 1974 or 75. I can't remember the, the time of the day. But I was ordained to preach that day, and I can't remember, not, not, not bragging about it at all, because it could happen tomorrow. I can't remember but one time missing church because I was sick. I can't remember but one time. I can remember a lot of times when I had somebody filling in because I couldn't do what I needed to do, but I was there, or doing it while I was sick not feeling well. Um, you moms with a, with a child know what I'm talking about. You can't, you can't call in sick. You can't take some time off. Well, preacher, um, it's summertime, and I think I'm going to resign my Sunday school class for the summer and come back in the fall, okay? What did your boss say? What do you mean, what did my boss say? Well, you're going to take off time from work, too, the same, aren't you? Well, no, i got to go to work. What, what's saying we got to go to work more than we got to go to church? We get close enough where we know the mind of Christ, where we know the mind of God. It's, it's uh, if I can't go to church, then I can't go to work. Make, a, make a, a big difference. Make a big difference in our lives. It's like saying, and don't, don't get me wrong, I'm not, I'm not saying that people want to be miserable. I'm saying people are unhappy, searching for happiness in places where they can't find it because they're not in the church house, they're not in their Bible, they're not in their, in their prayer closet like they need to be. Every week, I get multitudes, not multitudes, dozens of text messages back of the, the videos that we send out. And um, I, I, didn't get, I didn't get kicked off Facebook this week. That's one week out of three. Praise the Lord. I should have. I, I, th I think what saved me was whenever Linda said that the Harold Mill, I better not talk about it. Yeah, she said the Harold Mail was communist and liberal. That was Linda, Mummert Road, Clear Spring. Don't call me. Her number is, no, I ain't going to give you a number. God is a God of seconds, second chances. He's always got He's always got food, spiritual food for us if we want it. He's not like Becky. He gives it out freely. He won't stop you while you're eating. He won't interrupt you while you're, while you're trying to take nourishment. Jesus comes and said there's a, there's, a, there's a second rest that's even better than the first rest. The first rest is salvation. The second rest 
is even better because it's on top of salvation. We get it plus salvation. And that's when, when we obey the Lord. Are you this morning supposed to be doing it for God? Or are you just sitting along for the ride? Um, I can understand. I can't, I can't vouch for it, but I can understand why some people say, well, I've been, I've been serving the Lord for 50 years now, and here's these young people not doing anything. I, I, I agree with you. That doesn't give me the, uh, that doesn't give me the, the, uh, the right to quit. That doesn't give me the right to look at Brother Steve and think, well, he's not doing anything either. And she's not doing anything. Look at, look at him back there. He's not doing anything. We get our rest. The, I don't know if it's, if, it's, if it's the Bible thing or if it's a song. That our rest comes in the morning. Is that, a, is that a spiritual thing? That might not even be a spiritual thing. We'll have time to rest tomorrow. Time, the time is coming when we'll, we'll have all kinds of time to rest. He says, take my yoke upon you. Get busy. You don't need time off. You need more to do. It's the old thing. You want something done, you give the, the ones that are busy doing it, the, the, the chore of doing it, and it gets done. Um, Jesus said, I have life here that I'm going to give you. Then I'm going to give you abundance of life on top of it. I have rest here that gets you to heaven, and I'm going to give you abundance of rest on top of it so you can rest while you're here, so you can have peace while you're here, so you can, so you can enjoy it while you're here. There's no reason why we have to go through life as Christians, ho hum down in the dumps when he has everything ready for us that we need. I was out and I'm finished. I was out preaching one time. I don't know if anybody knows where Stoystown, Pennsylvania is. You ever hear of it? Stoystown, Pennsylvania. I, I think I, I was there. I don't think I was there. I mean, I know it was there. I was preaching one night. It's been about 15, 10, 15 years ago. If, if, if it runs in my mind right, it's up around uh, uh, Altoona, Somerset, somewhere in that area. It's about a two and a half hour drive. It's about 10.30 and the service was over and, and we, had some, we had some decisions that had a good service. And I was driving back home. The church gave me 50 bucks as for, for gas and stuff going, going back and forth. It was about 10.30 at night and I stopped at a little uh, truck stop wasn't even called a truck stop. It was, I think it was called the hole in the wall. The hole in the wall. Sort of like the, the roadkill cafe up here at Hancock. The hole in the wall. So I stopped at the hole in the wall. And there was one waitress and a, and a cook in there. It was 1030 at night. So I went in. I was going to get a hamburger, french fries, and a chocolate shake. I thought whenever I left the church, I was going to stop somewhere and get a hamburger, a french fries, and a chocolate. Well, the hole in the wall had it. This waitress come and she slapped the plate down in front of me. And I thought, well, that's not too nice. She came back 10 minutes later and I was hungry. And she said, what do you want? No, she said, can I help you? No, I'm just here for no reason. You don't have to help me. I'm just standing here. Got the hamburger and the french fries and the chocolate shake, which was very good. About 20, 25 minutes later, she came back to collect the money, and the bill was the bill was six dollars or seven dollars and ninety five cents, and I didn't have anything but that fifty dollar bill. And I thought, oh my, what am I going to do? I was too far away from Hagerstown to call anybody. They didn't take a credit card. So the bill came, it was seven dollars and something, and I gave the the rest of the money to the waitress. The tip to the waitress. She said she brought the bill back, she said, Here's your change. I said, I said, You can keep it. You can keep it. She immediately, I mean immediately, laid into the balling. Just immediately. Didn't even have the money out of my hand yet to her, and she laid into the balling, crying. That, that's what they call balling up here in Maryland. Brother Mike, 
Um, and she said, she goes on to tell me that her father, right before she was coming to work, her father had passed away. But she needed the job so bad that she couldn't take off work. And she was going home after work. She was going to go home and help her mama get things ready for a funeral. She said, she said, thank you, mister. Well, I was just excited. I, I think I could have made it from wherever we were at to home without the car, but I took the car, pulled in the driveway, and there wasn't a light on in the house, not a light. It was probably quarter after 12, 12.30, quarter till 1, somewhere in that area. Wife was in bed sleeping, out like a light. So I pulled in the driveway. I knew she was home because the other car was there. I pulled in the driveway, slammed the front door open, slammed it shut, and you could hear it. Amen? Up the steps, not a sound except turned the bedroom light on. Not a sound except, well, you get the idea. I went over and did, I did a, I did a, 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 put, a, put, a put my hand on her, on her rear end and just shook it a little bit. And that didn't wake her up. Finally, I, 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 um, I said something real loud. And she woke up and looked, looked around. She said, well, hi, honey, what are you doing home? I went to tell her the story, and she didn't appreciate the story near as much as I did. She went right back to sleep, and I didn't even get to, it's sort of like, it's sort of like hitting a hole in one when you're by yourself, you know? Um, but I was happy. I was excited. The next day when I shared it, she laughed. She belly laughed. She said, oh, I was awake the whole time. Yeah, you were awake the whole time, all right. You've heard that. I ain't even asleep yet. God says, I want to give you that kind of happiness all the time. I want you to feel that, that $42 tip all the time. It's waiting for you. It's waiting for you. Will you take it? The reason Christians are so unhappy in the, in the age in which we live is because they come to the spiritual table and the only idea they have of spirituality is missing hell. And don't get me wrong, that's important. That's the most important thing we can do is miss hell. But once we're saved, there's people across the road, people down the, down the alley, people downtown, there's people you work with. Unless you're, in a, unless you're in a super, super spiritual environment, there's probably somebody that you work with that if they die today, they'll go to hell. And who are you to sit there or stand there or work around them and hope that somebody else talks to them about the Lord? Good night, do your job and do what you're supposed to do for, with them. And you too will be happy. Guaranteed. Happy Christians, they're, they're, they're everywhere. Miserable Christians, they're more. Just don't let it be you. Father, I pray this morning that as sure as God be God, there are people around that need us to be happy, that need us to be excited, that need us to be on fire. Father, I, I looked into my Greek Bible this week I come across the words the Prince of Peace and beside in the Hebrew Bible in my Hebrew dictionary it had the word tranquilizer meaning that the Prince of Peace is like a tranquilizer we, we go to the pharmacy we get our medicines we go to the psychiatrist we get our treatments and they're all okay. There's nothing wrong with it. But do we go to Jesus to get our comfort? Do we really? If you're here this morning and you have Jesus in your heart, good night, you ought to be happy as anybody can be happy. 
Because number one, you missed hell. Number two, he gives you the formula to be happy here. There's someone you know. You can think of them real quick. That's without Christ. They're not saved. By their own admission, they, they, they would admit it to you. You need to be concerned enough about their soul that you talk to them about it. Challenge this week would be go to that one, go to that someone, go to those someones that are without Jesus and talk to them about Jesus. Nothing holding you back but you. Maybe you're here and you're, you're saved and you're not as happy as you need to be. And now you know why. Because you've just, just skirted heaven. Just enough to get along. You're doing just enough so you can say you were in church on Sunday. Or you opened your Bible and laid it on the table and thought, man, if I get visitors, they'll think I was reading my Bible. Why be that way when you can actually read it? Why be that way when you can actually be happy? God's the author of happiness. God is that tranquilizer, if you will. He'll, he'll calm the storm, or he'll calm you through the storm, one of the two. If there be one person here without Christ, I pray that you would allow the Lord to have his own way and Come into, come into your heart this morning. If you're not saved, be saved today. Invite him into your heart. Dear Lord Jesus, I know I've sinned. Come into my heart and forgive me of my, lo- for, forgive me of my sin. Just that simple. Just that simple. Maybe you need a good old dose of happiness. You need to climb up to the spiritual table and just dig into it. God's ready for you. And there's plenty of things to do, for sure. Father, go with us now as we've made our decisions. We, we're done. We're going to turn the lights out and go home. Don't let us leave this place with, with anything between us and you. Nothing. Watch over us now as our plea. Bring us back again next week for another time around your word. Cause us to do what we're supposed to do all week long for you. For it's in your name we pray and for your sake. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Have a great week. Be happy. You have a choice. You have a choice. Be happy this week. Give your life to the Lord.